Now looking back, just see.
I'm doing well. I'm on day four, no smoking. It, I've been struggling, but I uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so, uh, I uh, last week we were talking about seventy times seven, and that's something that I deal with a lot is forgiveness because I've struggled with being forgiven. I've struggled to forgiven others through this company, through God, and through everything that I've endured in the last six months, I've, I've grown patient, I've grown forgiven, and through God, a lot of relationships have been restored, re relationships with my family, and it's all due to the fruits of the Spirit, the number one being love, and uh, how many of you people have actually read this He Did It For You book? Good, jo good job, Chris and Josh. <laughs> but uh well the last chapter is on love and uh i was talking with chris over the weekend about forgiveness and he said well you should do one of the chapters of the book seems how i had a feeling that's how many hands were going up and so uh i chose it on the last chapter of the book love and the secret to your success love is something that i've i felt like we we're all born with but through through the devil and through life itself like on this human realm we we forget love along the way true love uh agape love ungodly love and so uh that's what i'm gonna do it on because i love each and every one of you and you've shown me how to love again like true love spiritual love uh i'm gonna read a couple of pages out of this book actually because uh they really hit me hard well a couple of paragraphs anyway and uh the very first page it says even believers seem to be confused about about it at times but they don't need to be the word of god reveals clearly what true what love truly is look at second john 6 and what love consists of is this that we live and walk in accordance with and guided by his commandments his orders ordinances precepts and teachings this is the commandment and you have heard it from the beginning, and you will continue to walk in love, guided and following by it. Now, I uh, I still struggle with that sometimes. I'm still, but through through the t through life and through everything that y'all have shown me, I, I I struggle with it, but every day I get a little bit better at it. I uh. God, God willing, I, uh, I have a, I have a meeting with my probation officer tomorrow, and uh, to find out if I can go up to New Hampshire where my family retired to, and uh, visit for the week, uh, because I just transferred and it's just a whole bunch of nonsense. But uh, and love has restored that because I haven't seen my family in seven years, and this is a really, really big deal for me because. My family told me they w didn't want anything to do with me, but through walking on this path, I've restored it uh, little by little. It's not been easy. Nothing in life worth doing is easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And so uh, I'm, I pray and I pray and I pray uh, that this can happen. And if not, I understand that it's God's will and not my will. So. I mean, there's always going to be another holiday because one thing that my dad actually messaged me over the weekend, uh, he says, uh, here, I actually want to find it because this really hit me hard. Uh, we were talking about going up and everything, and he still kind of doesn't know that I may or may not be able to come up, and so I, uh, he messaged me, he said, uh, tell I got I got ten brothers and sisters. One of my brothers name is Chandler. He said if Chandler is home on leave when you were visiting because my brother uh, also joined the military, perhaps we can recreate our family photo with eleven kids, uh, two moms and a dad. It's a big family photo and <coughs> my family lives all over the country so it's hard to get them all back at the same time. He said that would be the most awesome Christmas gift from mom and dad ever. And to be honest with you, son, I thought for sure you'd die before I ever get to take this picture. Praise God, our God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 So Amen. that really, really hit me. And uh, wow, uh, and he is—he is an awesome God. Uh, I mean, look, look 
at everything that uh, this ministry does, look at everything that's ever happened in any of our lives. None of us should be here today. We've all been down through there. And uh, through all God, he, he, he is the light of the world. And geared us back on the right path, the path of righteousness, the path of love. And uh, so I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, on the second page, it says, There is nothing, absolutely nothing more important than learning and love. In fact, how, accurate, how accurately you walk the perfect, how accurately you perfect the love walk will determine how much of the perfect will of God you accomplish. There, that's because not, because every other spiritual force d derives from the action of love. For example, the Bible teaches us that faith works by love. And, I mean, we walk by faith, not by sight. So we walk in faith, which means we walk in love, because if we don't have faith, then we don't have true love. And everything we do is, what is in love. For example, uh, and the answer to prayer is the most impossible that uh, the, when a believer steps outside of love and refuses to forgive or is in strife with his brother. In the beginning of the love chapter, chapter 1, Corinthians 13, which uh, is Corinthians, John, and 1 John, I, I read over the weekend, they, there's nothing but love in those three books. And... Uh, for anybody who hasn't read them, you really need to because it'll open up your perspective and it'll open up your mind to things that are going to help you in your faith walk. But it says, the word says that the tongue is just noise if there is no love. Uh, if a person has the gift of prophecy, understands all knowledge, and is, has enough faith to move mountains with, without love, he is nothing. If he gives us all that he has, to be poor and even sacrifices his love without the love of God he gains nothing uh, and uh, I've got I, I I struggled with this because one I've been busy all week and two because I uh, I I had made a mistake last time and the only the only word that is completely true and no matter because these are not my words God is using me as a vessel to speak his words to you because if there's only one person in this room someone needs to hear it and so that's what God put on my heart that's what I've been studying on and that's what God's using me to say but uh I've got a bunch of a bunch of uh scripture um hold on one second Right here it says, with, with, uh, if he gives all that he has to be poor and sacrifices his life without love of oh God, he gains nothing. And uh, in John fifteen thirteen it says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And I believe that each and every single one of us, because we are a brotherhood, uh, there are four different types of love. Uh, agape love which is unconditional God love storage which is empathy bond philia which is friend bond and eros which is a romantic bond uh, agape love is what the, what the Lord has for us he has unconditional love without without change without uh, without anything like he will always love us we can't even love our children as much as he loves us. Storage, I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, empathy love, but it's, I mean, it means empathy love. But philia, which is a friend's bond, uh, which is what each and every one of us shares in this room. We are friends, we are brothers, and that's what type of love we share. But I feel like every single one of us loves each other enough that we would lay down our lives because without without love, no, it's, it's just greedy, I feel like. And uh, Euros, which is a romantic bond, which is what uh, we share with our partner, what we share uh, with any anybody that we're close to. Sorry, I'm super nervous and uh, super tough. Um, but, uh, so I'm going to go through some scriptures that really hit me hard. I, uh, it's going to take me a minute because they're all screenshotted. Uh, 
But uh, the first one I wanted to get to is John three sixteen. It's the most it's the most uh, well known chapter or verse in the entire book. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we all know, we all have heard it, but do we all understand what that means? That is that is the agape love. He gave his only child to for our sins. And a world of people that didn't believe in him, that didn't know him, that didn't love him. He gave his own flesh and blood, his own seed for us. Now, I, I don't believe there's a single person in this room that would uh, sacrifice their child for a world of people that they don't know, that don't know them, that don't love them. And to me, like... To even fathom what that means is just there's it, it's unconditional. It really is the the love that he has for the entire world is is amazing, and I thank him for it because Lord knows I've sinned, Lord knows I still struggle with it, but you know he it is all forgiven because of that passage. In Colossians, oh, uh, Galatians, sorry. It's here somewhere. Galatians 5.22. Now these, this is uh, important, I feel like. They are the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, the most important being love. But love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, and faithfulness. Now, if we walk in love, all the other fruits of the Spirit come. I, I truly believe that I'm... Uh, if we walk in love, then all the other fruits come with it. Because you can't have, you can't have joy without love. You can't have peace or long suffering or kindness or goodness <coughs> or faithfulness. They all derive around love, which I feel is the most important fruit of the spirit. Um, John two six. I uh, I think I already read that. Yeah, I already read that. Uh, and then Colossians three fourteen, which. Uh, it's actually 12 through 17, uh, which there are two uh, two uh, verses that hit me really hard, and this is actually an entire passage. Um, but this this is something that it just blew my mind. Sorry. It's here somewhere, I promise. All right. Therefore, as an elect to God, holiness and beloved, put on tender merciness, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing one another, and forgiving one another. If anybody has a complaint against one another, even as Christ gave you, so you must. So you also must do, but above all things put in love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing <coughs> one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in the hearts of your Lord. And whoever, and whatever you do in word or in deed, in all the name of the Lord Jesus give thanks to the God the Father through him because nothing we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him and it's and one of the, the reason why I feel like this came up is because it says but above all things put on love which is the bond of perfection if you walk in love then you walk in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is perfect and that that just hit me really deep. Everything we do, we need to do in love. Everything we need to do, because anger and frustration and depression and all those feelings that we get that I still struggle with. Like I'm going, I'm going through it right now. But uh, and I feel like that's why God put me on this because it wasn't not not only to teach y'all but to teach myself. I went. I woke up yesterday. I went to church. And it just so happened 
and it's crazy that uh, uh, Donnie had spoke on this very subject at Adair, and uh, I I left and went home, and it was just on my mind and on my mind. I didn't I didn't start studying until yesterday. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Uh, I I lost. I pivoted a little bit. I called Chris the few nights before when I decided what I was going to put it on. And I I had screenshotted all this stuff, but I didn't even really... I read it, but I didn't listen to it. I heard it, but I didn't listen to it. So yesterday, uh, Joe and Dustin had went to the Center of Hope. I got back at like 12.45. And uh, by the time they got home, I passed out with the book in my lap, my phone on the Bible app. I had... I had I had studied myself to sleep, and <laughs> and when I woke up, uh, and when I when I woke up, like Joe, I I started talking to Joe. If if anybody has any questions or anybody needs help with anything that pertains to the Bible, if Chris and Josh aren't available, Joe is a phenomenal person to talk to. Like the his his humbleness, his just the way he carries himself, his knowledge of, of the Bible and of the Lord, it, it's, it's really awesome. Last night, one question turned into an hour-long conversation, and I went to bed. Like, I was stressed the whole time about it, and by the time I got done with this conversation, I felt like I was ready. I felt like I understood, because reading it and speaking with someone who understands it is two different things, because you can read it, and by the time, and I have a problem with this, I could read something, I read an entire chapter of Battlefield of the Mind, and as soon as I get done with the chapter, I'm like, what did I just read? I, I It lost, but Joe really put it into perspective for that, so if anybody ever needs any, someone to talk to, or needs help <coughs> studying, Joe is the man, and uh, Thanks, so, two thumbs up. All right, and uh, another you're late. <laughs> I hang out with Josh too much. <laughs> Romans 8 says, by, by God demonstrate his own love towards us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he goes back to John 3, 16. While we were sinners, he was a saint. He laid down his life, and that is that is the most unconditional love that I can possibly imagine. I can't even comprehend it. Uh, love you, John. <laughs> uh, uh, Another thing that uh, I struggle with that I'm glad I read is 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all things you do be done and with love. And that goes back to walking in that perfection because if you walk in love, then you walk in perfection in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is perfect. Uh, and another thing we were talking about last night, the Bible is very repetitive it'll say the same message 50 different times using different words different analogies different for instances so i feel like everything but like chris says he spent 15 years in prison he read the bible through and through many many times but every time he reads the bible he gets something new from it and that's 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 the glory of god because it there's only one person that can fully comprehend the Bible and everything that's in it, and that's the that's the author of it. And so, uh, the th I, if y'all feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what Jesus did, and uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Because you can uh, let's I'll use an example. Josh will tell me 15 times to do something. And he'll text me, why didn't you do it? And so it's, uh, so, um, but eventually 
I'm gonna get it. It may take me 15 different times, but eventually I'm gonna put the data bin upstairs where it goes, I promise. <laughs> and so, and I feel like, I feel like that's the reason why it says the same things over and over because how many times are you going to read it before you actually listen to it? How many times are you going to hear it before you listen to it? We are we we are creatures of imperfection, so to be perfect, we need to follow these rules. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me. Um, John four sixteen. I just seen it. Hold up. Now, and I say again, John and First John are just the. I feel like those books are entirely written about love because I uh most of these scriptures are from John and First John. But John four sixteen says, and we have known and believed that love. Believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and who abides in, in love abides in Him, and God in Him. So if we abide in love, then God abides in us, and us in Him, because we 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 are His descendants. We are His blood. We are His kin. And so, and that and that goes back to fear thy Lord, because I forget the word that Josh always uses. But when you, it, and a lot it's a huge. What is it? Reverence, yes. Uh, it's a huge misconception. It's not a fear because he, a fear of, like Adam and Eve feared when they hid from him. It's a fear of respect, of reverence. We d we don't want. Whenever we make a mistake, uh, we do something our father doesn't, our our dads want us to do, don't want us to do. It it's a it's a fear of disappointment, a fear of letting them down, and that's. It's, but it's out of, out of respect. It's out of love, and so it. And I feel like that's what that's saying here. Believe that God has for us. God is love, and who abides in love abides in Him, and God in Him. So, uh, and it took me a long time to understand that, because I grew up in a praise assembly of God, and I felt like, and no one ever actually put it into terms with me. And like Joe and I were speaking last night, I grew up in a praise assembly of God, but for me to really understand the Bible, understand my relationship with God, and understand God himself, I literally had to forget everything I ever learned about the Bible and start as a new canvas to really understand, because what I thought I knew a lot of the time was not wrong, and it's like, and it's easy for me to forget if anybody knows me I'm, I'm forgetful so it wasn't easy to do but through the pounding through the teachings through this class through church every Sunday I'm finally starting to develop a real understanding of what the Lord is and uh, and what everything is about and it may, it's helped me in my walk with Christ because I thought God was a, a hateful God he 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 was always disappointed in me. I was never. I was going to hell, and none of those things are true. Like, if I if I repented and I sinned again, then I wouldn't. For, he wouldn't forgive me. And it's like everything I learned was wrong. And I feel like if I had the proper teachings and the correct teachings, that I w I would have walked a straighter path. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason. And I mean. Jesus died on the cross, and throughout the Bible, there's there's people that have gone to prison and eaten by eaten by the whale, and it's like we we have to go through these trial these tough times and to learn what everything is. I mean, Paul he killed hundreds of thousands of Christians. All the teachings that he taught were what he thought was wrong, but he wiped his slate clean and it gave him a better understanding and he wrote what four of the books in the bible uh, more than that 14 14 yeah, yeah. Huh. close well, up <clears throat> I, I, I wrote, wrote a lot in there i was testing you to make sure you were paying attention you passed the test <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't.
aren't canonized by the Catholic Church. Uh, there were other books. I don't think it was written by Paul, but. I don't know. We'll continue on, brother. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, but. Uh, you are a little bit. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's not me speaking, it's the Lord speaking through me, but, uh, um, we've got about, we've got about eight minutes left, and, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Chris has a few things to say, but, uh, the point of it, the point of my rambling was just, whenever we feel angry, whenever we feel depressed, when it, just take a deep breath. If we feel like doing something out of spite or out of anger, just remember that that's not godly, that everything we do in love is because we're made perfect by Him. And so, on that note, I just want to say I love y'all. Love you too, buddy. said um, one of the most powerful revelations in this in the word in the word of God I believe can be found over in John chapter 17 the gospel of John John 17 verse 23 and it says this it says the father has loved us as much as he loved the son it's kind of hard for some people to grasp because they have had a misconception of God their whole life. But it, and Jesus is praying this. This is, this is the Lord's prayer that he's praying over us, and he wants us to get this. And I think it's pertinent that we get this. It's so important. Now, that's John 17 and 23, if you want to read it for yourself. He says, pray that they would get the fact that I love them as much as is I love you, the Son. Now over in 1 John chapter 4, one thing, one thing that's cool to remember about the Apostle John was he's the only one who refers to himself as the Apostle that Jesus loved in the Gospels. Now we know that Jesus loved all the Apostles, right? But I feel like he's the one who got that revelation. He understood that. He was the one who laid with his head on the bosom of Jesus, on his heart. And he's the one who was confident in his identity. And I think we all need to get to that place. He's the one that wrote, you know, the Gospel of John. He's the one that the Holy Spirit spoke through and said, they need to get this, right? They need to understand this. They need to get the same revelation that I have. So in 1 John 4, Ryan just read this, and I want to just speak it again because God loves repeating stuff, right? Amen. Amen. So, First <clears throat> John four sixteen says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Man, I think a lot of people have known it but they haven't believed it. You know, they've known it, but they haven't believed it. And I think that God wants to get us to a place where we not only know it, right? And that, that word know, we talked about this before, is the intimate word know, spending time, right? Not just the new birth, but also the relationship that is birthed from the new birth, where we spend time and we really get to know Him. But we really, truly need to not only know it, but believe it. Why? Because in Galatians 5, it says that faith what? Faith works by love. Everything, the Bible says that all the promises of God are what? Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Right? Now, if we tap into these promises by faith, because faith works by what? Love. Then we need to not only know, but faith means to what? To believe. 
So if we want to access everything that God has for us in this book, in the Word of God, all the promises, the plans, the purposes, if we really want to tap into these things, we have to not only know it, but believe it. Right? And faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing by the Word. Yeah. You just said that. Yeah. You walk by faith, not by sight. That's what I meant, Seth. Okay. We understood what you meant. Amen. Oh, and uh, one more thing that I wanted to work. Uh, it was one of the <coughs> things. Uh, uh, he, we love him because he first loved us. That's yeah. another huge uh, passage that really touched me. Like, without his love, we could not love Amen. Amen. Yes. His love for us enables us. The fact that he laid down his life and we received that that word. Now in verse 17 it says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So through the sacrifice that he made of laying down his life, the Bible called Jesus the firstborn of what? Many brethren. So now we have we have taken we have taken on the nature of love because God is love. But when we understand, we begin to understand. Um, when we begin to understand this love, know this love, and believe this love, we're able to tap into faith, and we're able to tap into all the promises, the plans, everything that He has for His life. Let's let's close out over in Second Peter. Because we have a responsibility. Once we receive this love, we've known it, we believed it, we received it. Now we have a response, responsibility of getting in the Word. And as we get in the Word, this love is perfected in us. Right? This love is perfected in us. As Ryan said, he didn't really understand love prior to coming into the kingdom. And now he's beginning to understand it. He's beginning to grow in love. And I've seen, I've noticed a pattern in the Bible in several different places in the New Testament it says as we grow in love, it'll keep us from stumbling. So that's one of the keys to living a victorious life is to grow in love. And watch this. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's start out. Let's start out with verse 1. We're about to close out. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. And His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. That's what we are just talking about. Through the knowledge of Him who has called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. So we have taken on the divine nature. We have taken on the nature of love. And through that nature, we're able to, what, escape the corruption that is in the world. Now watch this. But also for these, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. So if you study this out, we don't have time, we probably do it on another day. You'll see this is basically, you're looking at walking in the fruit of, fruit of the Spirit, walking in obedience. And as you walk in these, in the fruit of the Spirit, there's a progression to agape love. And when you, as you grow in agape love, he says, for if these things are yours and abound in you, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you'll bear fruit, right? If you walk in love, if you grow in love, the love that we've been talking about, agape love, you'll grow in fruit, you'll grow in the knowledge of Jesus. And then verse 9, watch this. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. So if you don't walk in this, you'll lose your vision, you won't know where you're going. So as you walk in love, it gives you clarity of sight, clarity of vision, and watch this, verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, the things we just talked about, walking in the Spirit, walking in love, 
He says, you will what? You will never stumble. You will never stumble. Right? For, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So not only will it keep you, not only will it make you fruitful, it'll give you vision, it'll keep you from stumbling, and your entrance into, into the kingdom will be what? Abundant. Right? Abundant in the things of God. And Peter says, for this very reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always. There's that repetition again. I will remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I'm in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you constantly, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as your Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you will always have a reminder, once again, of these things after I leave. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's my responsibility to take time out of my schedule to notice these reminders. Yeah. I've got to know him. And part of knowing him is, and loving him is what? Keeping his commandments and walking this thing out. Amen. And talking to him. Amen. Relationship. All right. Praise God. All right. Let's get ready to close out. Brother James. I got a very blessed. Uh, next, month, next year, all of 2020, my mom's getting busted knees replaced. And uh, so, and I'm going to have to take, help take care of her and my grandmother. <laughs> Need some prayer. Yeah. 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 Who's pointing that laser? Stop it. <laughs> Hey, gentlemen, this is this is extremely serious time right now, man. This is prayer. This is when God moves not and saves the lost like I was, <coughs> like, you were, like you yeah. were, like you were. I agree. There's a time and season. I'm for just all saying. Things. I'm not trying to be mean or disrespectful, but God heard y'all's prayers when I was almost suicidal and homicidal, Amen. and stopped me dead in my tracks. Let's not laugh. Let's not play games about this. Mm -hmm. Love you. Well, dealing with sickness since Friday. I've been uh, off and on with a fever. Um, I mean, my lips are breaking out, cold sores, and just appetite. Okay. I'm gonna pray for my brother. Anybody else need prayer? Yeah. Come on up if you need prayer. Yeah, come on. Areas that I have the strength to fight this desire to pump. Yeah, yeah. yeah just walk it out. <laughs> come up here, Jeff. My new Walmart buddy Leo. You turn this off if you want. I did. Yeah, it's off. Still red. <laughs> <laughs>